permission now guys, Ritwell here from OG Fly Studios. Um, today we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step on the Stella Fly um, and just giving you a little run through about the history and mythology on it. It's actually called a Stella, named after the baitfisher Gilchrist Stella, um, not the spinning reel. Uh, but yeah, so I developed the Stella for targeting Leary, Garrick, Learfish, whatever you want to call it, um, at a local estuary that I fish quite a lot. But the reason that I created it was because there were a hell of a lot of fish feeding on small gill cristella, not in the typical way that Leary feeds, and the conventional topwater lures flies weren't getting the eats. Um, so these baitfish kind of frolic on the surface, and there aren't these big bust ups, there's like gulps on the surface similar to rolling top. And so essentially, I wanted something that still created a uh, how do I say, like a disturbance on the water uh, but without making too much of a pop and I still wanted the fly to be sitting in the surface form. Um, so yeah, basically the result of that thought process is this guy, the Stella. Um, there are a couple of other little tweaks and things that I added to make it more realistic but essentially it's a brush fly which is sitting in the surface film. Um, but then I've tied foam in in a specific way which gives it this sort of shape um, so that when you're stripping it on a slower strip it just wakes on the surface and creates a nice V-line. If you give it a slightly harder strip it then actually shoots uh, or like sprays little droplets of water um, which is very similar to, to what you see when those, uh, those gill cristella are frolicking. And although it was designed for Leary's um, you know, uh, my mate Ty was guiding up in Pongola. He put one of these in the mix for topwater tigers and yeah, all hell break loose. Um, subsequently, I did a season guiding and yeah, let's just say that the, the topwater Stella has kind of changed the game on the, on the topwater eats for tigers. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do today is just uh, run through the step by step. Uh, tying of the Stella. As I said, it's got different applications, whether it's Leary or Tigers. So this is a completed Stella um, saltwater one, uh, but essentially step by step, first thing we're going to do is tie in the tail section. Um, so on the tail section, like on this one, I like to use a natural fiber bucktail. So I'm going to tie in my bottom uh, lighter color. Then in the middle, I'm going to be tying in a flash blend, which is a blend of Shiner and Flashaboo, and then my darker color um, of Bucktail over the top. So first thing I'm going to do is tie the tail in, glue that so it's nice and secure, tail sorted. Next step from there, I'm moving into what I'm going to use to build this body, essentially like a stacked brush fly. Um, so I'm going to be using some sculpting fiber. You can use any sort of stacking fiber like an EP fiber, but yeah, I use a fishy and sculpting fiber. I'm going to stack that, build up like a big pom-pom of a body, and then after that I'm going to tie in uh, my specific shaped foam, glue that down, and then I will trim the body of this whole stacked stacked fiber body to the shape to match up with the profile of the um, of the fly just to get that nice bottom profile shape and then once that that's all, all done and i got the shape that i like then i'm going to glue the eyes in uh, and then essentially once one's done so on the fly is obviously the hook that you're going to be using and like the application for the hook is going to be according to what species you're going for. Um, this is the hook that we're going to be using uh, for this version of the Stella um, because this is you know connected to uh, fishing for tiger fish on top water. Um, you know, if you want to know more about the mythology of the fly and fishing it for tigers there's a pretty cool article out in the in the current mission so be sure to go and have a have a read through on that but uh, getting back to the hook uh, tigers are flipping hard mouths they hit really quickly and one of the biggest things with fishing for tigers is getting a good hook set so for that purpose you need a nice thin gauge sharp point hook uh, so your typical stinger hook is the way to go. There are a number of different types of stingers and different brands. What I like to use is the Mustard Signature Series um, stinger hook. 
uh, and I'm going to be tying on a 1-0 it's quite versatile because you can catch smaller tigers and bigger tigers on it uh, but yeah I used to tie them on a 2-0 for the bigger fish and if you're going for something like those Tanzanian tigers or something I would suggest going for a much stronger hook uh, like a SB600 which is like GT realm but um, but yeah for the purpose of our South African tigers a stinger whether it's a gamagatsu or a mustard in a 2-0 or 1-0 is the way to go so cool cool we're all set to go um so yeah first things uh you know tying thread again there's a number of different types of threads and thicknesses like from 140 to 210 like i've tied with trout thread when i haven't had anything else but i find a nice happy medium is like a 140 denya it's not too thick that it builds up too quickly um, on your hook shank um, but it's thick enough to to pull hard enough so I'm I'm using a red thread you can you can, you can use any color thread that's that's going to work for you um, the reason I'm using red is just uh, I'm going to be tying like a, you know color wise like a tilapia colored uh, uh, Stella um, so just the little thread wraps left over at the ends act as a nice little like red hot spot like a red breasted tilapia type vibe first things first like I'm just going to attach my thread to the hook. If you want to start off with your thread being in line with the point of the hook, it's a good reference point. So, um, yeah, if you've tied bait fish patterns before, unless you're doing one solid color, uh, generally you're going to have your lighter color on the bottom and your darker color on the top. I just got some white bucktail. Um, lots of brands of bucktail. I get mine from Fishient HDO, a nice local company. So what I'm going to do is just grab a grab a, a clump of bucktail. Let me actually just pull this away so you can see a bit better. So you know, there's lots of different sections on a bucktail. You'll find like the sections on the bottom are like a hollow fiber, which like flare up quite a bit. Um, and then as you move up, they're like nice and thin and and a bit more wavy. So generally, your top parts of your your bucktail are going to be your better fibers. Um, but yeah, you can make do with what you got. So let me just show you here what I'm doing. So I'm just going to grab a nice clump of bucktail, and generally, I'm going to grab more than I'm going to use in my fly because in what I'm holding here, being a natural fiber, it's going to have longer and shorter. Um, uh, fibers for the purpose of like managing your little pelt of, of bucktail always cut as low down as you can so right at the bottom because then it just keeps a nice clean pelt for working with in future and you can see what you you're working with yeah, so now now that I got that that clump um, of bucktail you can see there's like smaller fibers and it's all looking a little bit messy so what you do is now I'm going to hold the I'm going to hold the back section which have got all the longer fibers and I'm going to so I'm holding the back section with all the longer fibers and now with the, my right hand I'm going to pull out all these shorter fibers which overly bulks the fly in some cases that can be beneficial but in this case you want a nice streamlined tail so that's like now excess which I'm going to discard okay and again I'll just do another couple of run throughs Yeah, and okay. So now I'm happy that I've got the right, right thickness, and mostly the same length fibers. You may have one or two outliers, but in the most part, that's now what I want. And you want to keep it nice and tight together for when you, for when you tie it in. The length of the tail is about almost twice the length of the hook now that I'm looking at it. So you'll see I can also get more length in the fly when I tie in my flash blend which will go down the middle. So like in terms of a nice taper what you want is uh, your longer fibers to be in the middle. One thing with, with, uh, with bucktail and I'm going to do something now just to accentuate it. So I'm just where I'm tying it in now you know, you see how it's nice and thin, but if I pull, if I pull tight on this, it then it wants to flare the fibers. So I've already actually tied it in. 
but so if you pull tight it flares the fibers and then you lose that nice streamlined look that you're going for so with bucktail always tie kind of ahead of where you where you're going to be ending so say now I've tied if I want to end say a millimeter back from where my thread is I've tied a head first so that I know cool I've got a good anchor on that and you can pull really tight without it flaring the material then you can come back and you see how I'm pulling this bucktail now keeping all the fibers nice and neat together I can do my last two last couple of wraps without pulling too hard and flaring it just to hold it and then it keeps it in a nice streamlined keeps a nice position on the on the tail but a uh, little bit of housekeeping always goes very far in keeping things neat on a fly so what I do now is just remove this excess bucktail and you've essentially got the bottom section of your, your tail. If you've got one or two of these outlying hairs, you can just pull them off. But a little bit of bugginess is never really a bad thing. But your general shape you want to have quite neat. So now I've got my white belly section of the tail. Um, and now I'm going to tie in my flash blend. For me, Shiner, it's a very fine flash. It's what I'm holding up over here. Uh, just to give you an idea, I've got a couple of different colors which I, I blend. That's your... The Shiner, it's a Fishian product. It's actually blended into quite a few of their flash brushes, um, but this is the raw material Shiner. The nice thing about this, if you put too much in, it is very easy to thin out just by pulling on your fingers. So I'm just going to grab a little section of it here. So now, again, I'm just going to tie this in. Yeah, so now I've got my flash again I, so I tie the flash in between the two sections of bucktail um, because that way the bucktail kind of encapsulates it and it's not too in your face the flash is almost coming through the bucktail so it's a lot of flash but it's presented in a more subtle way so now I'm going to do that exact same process just with a different color shiner um, getting a little bit of the green color cut it it out a little bit now that's going on top of the pull so you've got a bit of your green shiner flash find the excess okay I often will add an element of UV flash and again Shine is a nice way to, to incorporate that. Before I tie in the shiner, which you'll see is now like the darker aspect of the flash, um, you know, your, your shine is a very fine flash, but uh, it is nice to have a nice solid line, which can almost represent like a lateral line. I like Flashaboo, it's a Wopsy product, um, uh, but essentially it's a flat mylar flash. Uh, you get in numerous different colors, but uh, I always like to match up my flash color it's similar to the baitfish that I'm tying. Let's grab your two strands of flash that you're going to be using and then cut that off. I'm going to kind of check my length. So again, I'm having it extending past the bucktail. You can always trim it afterwards so that everything is nice and uniform at the end. So I'm going to tie in and this is like I'm not tying it on the side. I'm tying it on the top. Tie that in, and now essentially I'm going to take the other two strands, which are now facing forward, fold it over, directly over the other two, join that in, and now I've got like a nice neat set of four flash, four pieces of flash going back. You can do this at the end, but now I'll just trim it, and they're all the exact same length, and tie it in nicely in the middle. That's my flat mylar flash. So we are now tying in the last part of our little flash blend in the middle. And that's the little section of UV shiner. So now we've we've essentially got the flash part. So we've got our bucktail section at the bottom that holds everything. Leka stops too much wrapping, and then a nice blend of our flash just above the bucktail on the bottom. And now we're going to close that all in with our darker color of bucktail. So I am going to be cutting a a section like over here. I'll cut it right at the base, super nice and tight up against the pulp. Pop that off, pinch the longer fibers, pull out the shorter fibers. There we go. So again, just want to line that up. And remember, as I said, 
always tie the front part of your bucktail in just to secure it and you know it's in place and then keeping it nice and nice and neat you can then wrap it to the back okay so now I'm, you can always have a check generally you know that you have an over tight sometimes you lob side your bucktail and then you don't see the flash and there we go that's the essentially the tail section i give one or two wraps just behind where i've tied it in so that everything is kind of bound nicely on the same level and before i do the next step what i'm going to do is just uh, super glue this so now i'm just going to super you leave a thread on put a decent amount of super glue so you just want to make sure it gets on the thread so I'll actually put a bit of super glue on the actual fiber itself and you can see how that's now like keeping everything nice and stiff and straight you've still got the movement in the back that's gonna stop it from wrapping quite a bit just by stiffening it over there now when we build up the body what we're gonna use is this is sculpting fiber um, Again, it's a, you could use something like an EP fiber, but essentially it's a nice fiber that you can stack and then trim uh, to, to build a nice shaped body. Um, today we're going to use like a wild olive color. It's just nice for that uh, um, sort of tilapia look, but one can use any color depending on what bait fish you're going to be imitating. So this is your um, the sculpting fiber, and I'll show you now why I... I'll rather take a long piece and keep tying with one long piece than, than a short piece. What you do want to have is like a little bit of a transition from your, your sort of stacked body shape into, into your tail. So for your first stack, when you tie it in, you can see it's extending a little bit past the, past the hook. You can still trim that length towards the end, but you kind of get it in you've got a bit of a taper going there you don't want to make it too long if it's too long it's a synthetic fiber it does start to wrap and again i hate having a fly that wraps now i've got that sort of length that i want and this is for the first part so it's transitioning into the tail section i'm now going to wrap my thread around here a few times so i would say like four wraps is enough okay now what i'm going to do this section i'm going to cut and then fold back um, lengthwise i don't want it to be longer than you know what i've just tied in for the transition so you can kind of gauge that holding this now i'm going to cut that section and i'll keep this long section because i'm going to use it again for another stack rather if your fibers are going to be pointing in a direction rather have them pointing more downwards because you are going to have foam coming over the top so now you're just folding that you can see that sort of transition amount is still there so now you fold that back take your thread forward and just kind of bind it in there so i'll just put a touch of super glue on the thread and on the fiber that way that you know that it's not going anywhere and it's secured properly bring your thread a little bit past where you finished off put a section that mustn't extend past your previous fiber and you're doing the same process now sort of four wraps again you can just pull it and shape it down i'm just going to trim it to the length that i, I wanted we've got our tail tied in we've now got our stacked body um, if this was a brush fly you could just trim your body right now i'm not going to trim it just yet because as i said i'm going to tie in my foam in a specific way and then i'm going to tie then i'm going to trim the stacked body um, according to the shape of the foam all i've done is uh, essentially cut a rectangular piece of foam okay now i'm going to fold it so it's just a folded section so i'm going to cut this at an angle sort of not directly from the middle just off center on this side and up towards the corner so i've done that okay now i'm going to turn around and i'm going to do the same thing okay but i'm not going to do it from uh from the center 
it's going to be you'll see there I'm going to leave like a little bit of a flat section on the right hand side same story I'm going to put super glue on the face of one side and then just glue this together so that's now your piece of foam ready to tie in we're going to reverse tie it essentially I'm going to put it facing backwards and I'm going to tie it in a good way it's probably like a centimeter ahead of where this foam ends so that's going to be under the fly it creates a nice shape for you to put the eyes it bulks it up at the front uh, which gives it a little bit more um, push in the water but first thing I'm going to do is check that position okay now I'm going to just take my thread around the foam and tie it in okay obviously you can see now that it's twisting a little bit you can just bring it back up so the shape is nice and nice and uniform so if I bring this here give you a good idea you've tied it in you want to make sure that it's like nice and straight just fold it back push it down and give it a squeeze and then you get an idea of the shape and proportions that it's going to have so on that, I'm going to just try bring that so you can see. You can also see if I do pull that, it creates a nice little base for your eyes to go in the corner there. Since you're going to super glue the whole bottom side of this foam, now you've got to f you're going to fold this back and keep it nice and straight. You fold that back and push down quite hard so it's like actually gluing onto all the fibers almost down to the thread of the hook so it's not glued on top of the fibers it's actually like into the fibers and with that you're pushing down on top you can also push down on the sides a little bit and that gives it like its nice top curvature now all i need to do is tie off the fly let's do a couple of wraps around the front grab a whip finish tool And last thing I'm going to do now is just put a last bit of super glue around the thread where I finished it off. This works well before trimming is, you know, with a needle, I just use the back of my whip finish tool. With a needle or a bobbin or anything, you just tease out the fibers just to make sure there's no trapped fibers that you're going to, going to cut and have an uneven finish. So this just helps to kind of get nice and ready for trimming. So what I'm going to do now to get my actual desired shape is I'm cutting off this corner. I'm going to go and do the exact same thing. Try and keep it symmetrical. Um, and that's then going to give you your desired shape. That's the sort of shape that you want for your, your Stella. You can see there's still a little bit of your brush body sticking out the back with the transition. Now we're going to go hairdresser on this thing um, and start trimming away What I mentioned earlier is the shape of the foam gives a nice teardrop shape, nice bottom profile uh, to imitate a fish. You're going to use your foam as a guide and trim to the same angle as the foam and that way your body and your foam all have the same profile and it gives it one nice uniform profile essentially trimming a nice little round fish-like body. I also like to use, uh, these are, I think, Marc Petitjean hair cutting scissors, but it's nice because it's got a long blade, so for getting like a uniform cut over a longer section, they work quite nicely. This little back section is a little better if it's on the top because then it's less chance to wrap, but I'm still going to just cut it at an angle. What I usually do is I actually hold it in my hand I get a good feel for, um, you know, kind of where everything is and how it's looking. So I can do all the fine tuning and trimming in one's hand. Go in smaller increments. Once you've cut off, you can't put back. So rather cut it, have a look and decide, okay, I need to take a little bit more off and then take a little bit more off. But once you've cut one deep cut and it's too much then everything that you've done before is already not <laughs> you know you've kind of 
ruined your fly. We are almost there. You just got to stick eyes on, but to give you a good idea, a big part of this fly is the profile from the bottom. It's got like a round bottom profile. Let's get these eyes in there. What I'm going to use for eyes, uh, my favorite eyes for these are actually good old googly eyes. You can see now how tying in that reverse tie with that shorter piece of foam, it creates almost like a little cavity um, and a nice section for the eye to bond. So I'm just going to have a look, cool, get a good idea of where that eye is going to, going to go. That's kind of the shape, put some super glue a little bit on the foam. So now once that's in position, you kind of squeeze it down so it actually almost imprints into the foam a little bit and just hold it give it a chance to set so you can get an idea there's the position of the eye i'm going to do the same thing just put some glue a little bit on the foam a little bit on the fibers yes yeah, so now we've got both eyes in from the side profile you can still see the eye um, it's got a little bit of a shape to it and you know after the fact if you want you can uv resin you can add weed guards you can you can just take a little Copic marker and you can just kind of run from the eyes. Again, looking from the bottom, looks like a little fish's gills. Very lightly, again, don't set your whole fly light. You can just like touch it with the flame and then touch it and you'll see that just kind of rounds that, that edge. The last final finish on it, same on the back sections. With sculpting fiber, like there's always the odd little fiber that's around so if you really want to get like your shape done and like closed off nicely you can take a lighter and then very lightly go over it and then it kind of seals in your final shape but that now is essentially your completed Stella as I said you can play around with different colors um, you can play around with different foams to match what you are fishing for and yeah so that's your front profile that's your top profile. That's your bottom profile. This blunt nose like that specifically doesn't pop too much, but if you strip it, it shoots water out from each eye um, section with these little droplets with the rest of the body still in the water making a nice wax. So it's an easy thing for fish just to come up and snap. I'm on a mission now.